punch in Windows, it start picking up a uh, static noise. Are you recording? You're recording the call. The fucking <laughs> yeah! Surprise, surprise! This is gonna be for the podcast, by the way. Oh, oh boy! You're live. Oh boy! Bitch. Huh? I feel abused. Oh shit! <laughs> that. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, look, you hey, learn. You learn something new every day. It's gonna be weird because it's like it's so far apart. Where I cut it together, it's gonna sound weird. Mm. So what is this being used for? <laughs> uh, right, anyway, hello, hello, and welcome to Hear Me Scream podcast with my guest star. Introduce me. yourself. There you go. Me, Brazy. Yeah. This is yeah, weird. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, someone's first podcast right here. Yeah. Kind of didn't know this was happening. You know? Well, well life feel... is full of surprises. I feel like one of those porn stars that are just like, you, you, you get dark, dragged into it. And it's like, oh, no, no. oh, just record this. It's easy money. It's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Sign up the oh, contract I'm and then they tell you, oh, you're actually in the porn. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> Nobody told so, me that. Yeah, first of all, you're not even getting, you're not getting, you're not even getting paid for this, by the way. It's well, just... you're not getting paid either, so it's fine. <laughs> for now, give me two more years. You don't know. Fair enough. Uh, I won't judge. I can respect an that. Yeah. And apologies for events with the audio because in, because in my Skype we're using Skype because I don't because use we're ancient. Discord. We're boomers. That's why. <laughs> but you, uh, no, I'm just I don't like change. Nobody likes change. Fuck you, mean. <laughs> like you oh, know that's me. A discussion for another thing. Yeah. True well, yeah, it takes you ages to get over a fucking video game. I know that much. Is that what is that what you mean? We, we, okay, this is your podcast, not mine. We don't talk about my problems. We talk about yours. Okay, well, <laughs> I've listened I've to your podcast. Like, I've I'm been not like how two it goes. I, I, I did three podcasts talking how shit it is, but still. Anyway, I know a discussion, and that's because you just finished Sekiro lately, have, recently, haven't you? Yesterday, yes. Uh, yesterday, you actually finished it yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> when you were texting me, I was I was recording <laughs> I, the final battle. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah it's it's is good. But anyway, and I beat Sekiro the last year, mm. and I'm planning on them this year. So I guess we're both okay about the game, aren't we? Well, look, I think I think in general, Dark Souls type of games difficulty is overrated to like you know to no extent. Like people suck the dick of those games they're like oh such a hard game <sighs> such a hard game <sighs> it's like man shut the fuck up it's not that hard it's like sure it might look hard to somebody this is what i say in my video that i'm probably gonna upload like in three years uh, hey no but... advertisement for your channel this is about me <laughs> the thing is the thing is um <laughs> the thing is, uh, lots of people might go on YouTube, right? And they might see like the jump cut footage of where you just skip most of the normal enemies and they just show mostly the boss fights and stuff like that. They might think to themselves, you know what, that looks really hard. And it might, especially if you go to the final boss, because that's what I did with Dark Souls 3. When I never played a Dark Souls game, I just went to Dark Souls 3 on YouTube. I saw the final boss battle and I was like, this looks so hard. I don't know how I'm going to be able to actually play this game when I was purchasing it. But then I actually played the game and I realized it doesn't work like that. Like, you can't just go to the straight ball to the final boss and be like, "Yeah, that looks really hard." The game builds you up. That's the thing about those games. It's really they're really good at building up your skill. So you, by the time you get to end game with all the harder bosses, they're not that hard because you know the mechanics of the game. If that makes sense. It doesn't help that Dark Souls three final boss solo cinder is actually quite easy. True, but the DLC of Dark Souls 3 isn't that easy. Speaking about Slave Night Gale, you oh. know, Meteor, you know, those two bosses aren't easy. Now, I'm not saying they're impossible, but they're not easy. So there they're is that. good, that's what they are. True. Uh, but yeah, like, eh, let, let's not talk about difficulty when it comes to Dark Souls games, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't see this ending well. <laughs> uh, I don't the see the hardest boys being happy with that one. Day. Yeah. Oh, uh, don't worry. This video is gonna, it's gonna take like a couple of years before people will find this podcast, and then they will use it as ammunition for later. But don't don't worry about it. The bots are always gonna be on your channel. 
Oh my god, there's so many of them. <laughs> what was it? I think it was one comment like, I'm here before 10 subscribers. And I was just thinking to myself, the fuck? <laughs> the fuck is this yeah, content? And then, and then the you, didn't gain a, you didn't gain a subscriber that day. And I was just like, ha, huh, something. Something's weird here. Shout out to my three subscribers, even though one of them is BD Brazy. The other two, I have no idea who they are. Or something you don't want to admit. <laughs> Quick tip. Quick tip. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, so your, t your topic about today is secure, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Because we're bo you recently beat the game. I have no idea how to describe Sekiro, even though 100% it, it's weird. I don't know how. Hmm. I was about to say, shit, this is your podcast. Why am I doing all the work? I'm the guest here. <laughs> Well, well, my yeah, I use other people. Anyway, what's your opinion on the game? Uh, she game uh, one of the, no. <laughs> the, I would say it's a ten out of ten, honestly. Like it has re it has replayability somewhat. Even though you might not be able to change your weapon, you can uh, fuck around with the prosthetic tools more. So there is re replayability to that, and there's some, you know, there's some different endings, different po bosses you can do. Yeah, it's a good game. Visually wise, it's very appealing. The soundtrack is good. Oh, it's the boss fights are fun. Game. It has the best combat that From Software has released in a video game, like bar none. But don't don't Wait. fuck with me. You know, Bloodborne I am is really good in combat. Disagree with the combat. Bloodborne is really good with combat. And... Yeah, go on. This is my podcast. It is your podcast. <laughs> And anyway, with Sekiro Combat, the thing that gets to me is the minute you master it, mm. I think the game becomes super easy. It's not like in Dark Souls or in Bloodborne, where like each boss is not designed for a specific split play style, but in Sekiro, a boss is designed on a specific play style. So once you master that play style, they just it's a domino effect. Everyone just falls after another. I don't exactly agree with that. I mean, I get where you're coming from. Sure, once you master how you play Sekiro, yes, it becomes quite a bit easier. But there is other things. If you have the Demon Bell, you know, debuff on or buff, you know, because you also get more items with it. Different story. And if you go in New Game Plus, you can get the Kuros Charm where it makes it makes pairing actually harder. Like you actually need to be perfect with your pairing. Then the game becomes a lot harder than in the base game. But, but that feels you, like an official discipline. That feels like. Well, the demon yeah, bell buff. Go. Yes, the demon buff. Wait, the demon bell buff is artificial difficulty. That is true. But the Kuros bell charm is an artificial difficulty. It's more like being the training wheels on your pairing on your pairing being removed on your deflex or. So. That one isn't an artificial difficulty. It's, I guess, the way it was supposed to be, but they were like, this shit's too hard, so we're gonna nerf it down, maybe? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't exactly agree with the statement of, you know, the once you've mastered it, it just it becomes uh, really easy because, eh, I mean, kinda, but secure to begin with, even without knowing how to play the game, isn't that hard because the. Um, that's the thing I noticed when I first started playing the game. The the pairing is connected to the block button, right? And you can just spam block button. You know, I've seen so, so many videos of people who don't know how to play the game. Uh, or not, they know how to play the game, but they're not good at pairing. They just spam the block button and they get lucky parries. That's how they win. No, but like... I am yeah. still there and I'm trying to put my thoughts together because like with Sekiro, it feels so weird for me because especially with the difficulty and the combat, like, like, no, I have not, like with all the bosses in the game, I have not been stuck on one for more than 10 tries. And I hear people's horror story with the Guardian Nape or the Headless Zave, there's like, yeah, I don't find the game hard at all. And I feel <laughs> that's like that's because that's of actually... the combat. That's funny you say that because the Guardian Abe, I almost beat him on my third try. <laughs> and then I beat him on my fifth try, I think. And then the, the Guardian Ape duo, I actually beat that shit on my first try, surprisingly. And uh, I was getting so stressed out with the Demon of Hatred because I've seen so many videos of people fucking wanting to destroy their controllers while playing against Demon of Hatred, right? 
And I was like, dude, this this is gonna be horrible. You know, this is a fucking this is no Sekiro boss, it's like a Bloodborne boss or whatever, a Dark Souls boss. It shouldn't be in this game. The dodge I won't be able to dodge his attack. It's not gonna be fun, right? I destroyed that shit. I was like, <laughs> I died twice, and then I was like, I'm gonna beat this on my fifth try, and I think I actually did beat it on the fifth try. <laughs> so, eh, you know, I, f I understand where you're that coming I from. Cheese demon of hatred. Well, you're you're something else. <laughs> hey, I hundred percent would say that my opinion is slightly better than yours. No, it's not. You cheese the boss fight. Therefore, your opinion is less valid. That's how the Dark Souls community works. If you summon, you're a bitch, and your opinion doesn't count. <laughs> Even though there's no summoning in second, There is. You know? I think they're gonna add that in October, actually. Oh yeah, the game is getting a free update where it has costume, uh, refightable bosses, yeah. and then... Something like a boss. Re boss read like the ghosts in Dark Souls where you see the player before they die or something? Something Phantoms. like that. I mean, it's something, I guess, you know. Yeah, it's a smart yeah, move because... Go Shoot, it's a smart move because Ghost of uh, fucking that game, Ghost of Tsushima, what the fuck? The one where people on Twitter are mad about because white people made a samurai game. <laughs> Apparently that's a problem uh, in 2020. Uh, but yeah, like there's lots yeah. of hype about that game, so you know, they're kind of they're kind of like, oh, there's hype about a samurai game. Well, have you seen Sekiro? <laughs> that's I think that's the whole point of it. So, out of all the bosses in Sekiro, which one would you say was your favorite? I think my favorite boss fight is. Probably the second outfight, the uh, the one in the memory. I hated mm -hmm. the first outfight. Yeah, I hated the first outfight. I thought it was, I didn't thought it was horrible. It was a good fight, but I hated it because the motherfucker kept running away from me, and I was like always, I was screaming. I was like, "Bitch, don't run away from me!" Because that was so annoying. He <laughs> he would just jump, throw shurikens, run away, then. Fucking try to cancel my healing and then run away again. I was just like, God damn it, man. <laughs> just fight me like oh, a man. And he did it. Yeah. No, which reminds me, the first owl fight is a perfect example of this game weird combat, from my opinion. It's like you can try and parry and deflect all his attack to get his posture meter up, or you can just hit him once, run away, and repeat that until he loses all the HP bar. And that's like. I don't think that's fun. It's weird. And it doesn't help when you do perfect deflect and parry. The, like, the posture bar just feels, goes down really fast. The same issue was with the fake illusion corrupted mon. And the same mm. with a lot of mini bosses had that issue. I, when I first th thought about that, one, I was like, yeah, this is bullshit. His posture bar regains too quickly. But then I became so aggressive in the fight where I literally didn't heal and I didn't give I didn't give a fuck like he was he was gonna throw the anti heal at me right and at that point I was like I knew it was coming so I was just charging my Ichimonji double and I didn't even bother with the um, I didn't even bother with trying to keep up his posture I was just like attacking him non-stop to the point where he just had no HP so his posture bar was like you know he was like three hits away and his posture bar was full so that's how I got the death blow. But I was like more focused on the HP bar than on the posture. But I don't think it was that much of a problem because it's just, it's just I used a different playstyle than the whole depend on posture or just hit and run away. I was like just go balls in, you know, and that worked for me. So I don't think it's that bad, honestly. It's just, just a matter of if you are the type of person who's willing to go all in with badly healing. Well, yeah. I guess we should go through all the bosses just to be fair, but like, there's not a lot of them actually. There's only like, there's also mini bosses in Sekiro. That's the thing. Lots of them. There's you only know, like, like fifteen base bosses. Mm. Yeah, but the mini bosses, man, like fucking, you know, it's like five heads. Oh, that, that's like we we talk about them another time, uh, in a later part. But let's go with the first boss being Kyopo Masataka Oniwa, the first boss of the game. Yeah, he's solid. Solid first boss, not the best, but solid. Seven out of ten. 
Yeah, but with the, the, the his death animation where the horse pushes you away, that got to me. That felt like, oh, like you can tell they had a personal bond. And then you you uh, you find the uh, you find the spear, which was like a part of his helmet or something like that. Well, it was his spear. I forgot exactly what's the was the whole backstory with that. But you do find his weapon, if you remember that. It's one of the protect tools. Oh yeah, well you have. Yeah, that, oh god, don't get me started on Posh uh, and the prosthetic tool, we'll get to that later. Anyway, so yeah, Masataka only, well, a good solid boss, not the best. And technically, Lady Butterfly can also be your first boss, as well. Mm. Really? I mean, compared to both of yeah, them, I guess. yeah, you can actually get the memory bell early. And compared to two of them, I prefer Lady Butterfly, because like, all women know how to slap. Dude, I, I killed her my first try, and I was like, yes, I, ki I, I killed the bitch. <laughs> and then she revived, and I was like, oh no, she revives. <laughs> that was fun. Also, her boss music is really good, by the way. I love it. That was a fun boss fight. Uh, that was a small gimmick with the whole Snapsy thing. But, you know, I can let that slide. That was fun. Really? I found it forgettable because the game never uses it again, only for that boss it's fight. Uh, yeah, that's why I thought it was like a gimmick, <laughs> because it uses only that boss fight. But you can use the snap seed to cheese the corrupted monk um, spirit, or whatever the fuck it was. So there's that. Really? I did not know that. Uh, well, I'm gonna tell you the story about that one. Keep going with the bosses. <laughs> okay, the next third boss is a lot of people's first uh, roadblock of the game, like Wall, and that is Kenichiro, the first, the first fight. Wait, the first fight when you find him in the in the tower, right? That one? Yeah, in the tower. That was easy as shit. I don't know how people get stuck stuck on that shit. It was fun, don't get me wrong. And it had like the cinematic effects where after you kill him, uh, he drops his armor. You see the lightning and shit like that. It was fun. It was really, well, it was like aesthetically pleasing and all that. So it was a solid fight, but I don't see the difficulty of it. I, I've heard people struggling on it, but I think it's most. I think the reason why people struggle on with it is because they think it's a Dark Souls game and they just try to dodge his attacks. And if you try to dodge his attacks, you know, nah, that shit ain't good for you. The the thing I love about Kenichiro the most was definitely lightning the flag. That's just an awesome thing to do in the game because it's so fucking cool. But other definitely. than that, I do actually. Kenichiro is actually very forgettable all around. Like, I don't remember his character at all in the game. Mm. Not even his music, weirdly enough. Which is weird coming from you. <laughs> but I you know what? Something fact. about lightning, uh, lightning the flag. That shit was broken as fuck. <laughs> Definitely, but damn it, does it look cool? Fair enough. It does look cool, I'll give you that. But it is broken. <laughs> Also, oh, his voice by Ray Chase, who also voices the main protagonist, Final Fantasy XV. Just had to mention that. Like, all right, moving forward, the folding screen monkey, which is obviously reference to see no evil, hear no evil, do no evil, and speak no evil, isn't that? It? Yeah, they're forgettable. Nothing special, honestly. At that point, mm. I was just I think I had music on, and I was just running around trying to find them and kill them. I know there's like the whole. Ring the bell so they don't hear you, shit like that. But I was just like, okay, in the start of the game, there's a monkey behind you, kill that one. And then at that point, I was just running around, around like a fucking chicken without a head, trying to find all of them. So, eh. And it works, doesn't it? It, it, it does, but it's, it's not the most fun fight, you know? It's an alright fight, but eh. 5 out of 10. <laughs> I don't like the aesthetic, like where you just ring the bell and the next thing you know, you're in this weird dimension rift or something and then you meet the child of rejuvenation which i actually really like her character i think she's adorable mm. I, that's the ending, uh, the ending i go was with her where she becomes like a fucking vessel or something like that. let's talk about the npcs later because i remember you talked about how you actually quite enjoy some of the npcs so we talk about that later sure and the next boss is the Guardian Ape, the one you're facing in the weird. Um, I really like the boss arena where it's like the Buddha statue pointing down. I I thought that was aesthetically pleasing as hell. Buddha statue pointing down? Where was that? In the boss arena. Oh, you're talking about the Guardian, the Guardian Ape boss. Yeah, which is uh, the next one. 
It, it, the boss arena is cool, and yeah, if you have the dive technique, you can actually go and dive in a certain area. In that in that boss arena, you can get precious bait. And also the fact that um, if you kill the fucking giant carp, right, uh, it, it respawns. It spawns okay, well, in that area. You're just jumping way right ahead, by the and, way. You'll calm the fuck down. And I mean, well, no, if we're gonna talk about the carp, that's why I'm mentioning it. Anyway. Oh, we're talking sure. about the Guardian Ape. The, the Guardian Ape, the Guardian Ape. Look, the first stage, I fucking hate the first stage. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't fun at all. <laughs> but the second stage is very easy to fight and predict and. Honestly, the second stage is way easier than the first one. I I, I like the whole you you kill him and then he revives and then you're like, oh, gotta do this shit again. <laughs> is that a fucking setup? Hey, that looks gross. You know that you can actually use the spear, the prosthetic tool on him, and uh, the spear has an ability where it can rip off armor, right? If you do if you do that technique on uh, the monkey, you pull out you pull out the centipede out of the body. And then he gets staggered, you do a lot of posture damage that way, and you can actually get a few free hits in. Fun fact. I've seen it, but I can never pull it off because it's been a game. My favorite strategy for this boss is just hit them once and run away because, like, it's a fucking viable tactic. What? Well, that was go hard, go hard, you know? I just went in fucking start spamming R1, R1, R1. <laughs> That's it. And then the next fight, which is actually optional, is the headless version. Version. You talking about the duo? Yeah. Nah, it was the same boss fight, just this time you have to fight the first stage and the second stage. And if you were smart, you just you defeated the fir the fir the first stage of that boss easily because it was just uh, the the A by himself, right? The second version uh, of the ape. You beat him. Then the the second ape came in. You would just spam firecrackers and you would kill the other ape. You know, that ape doesn't respawn, and then you just kill him again in 1v1 scenario, and that's it. So, I don't know, I don't think that was a hard boss fight in particular. I think people overestimate the hard, the, how hard that boss fight is, honestly. For me, the second fight of him is just very padding, because after New Game Plus, I usually just skip it and go to the area ahead, because it is optional. If you do not fight the Guardian Ape in the on his first arena and just go through the air the the second fight area first you can just completely skip it and it's like i recommend doing that i actually did that but uh, i still fought him for the reason the reason why i actually don't recommend doing what you do and fight him is because you get the memory and the memory gives you more attack power and it's worth yeah, it first for a fight that isn't that hard all you need is firecrackers and the umbrella shield if you have the umbrella shield you can get terrored so you can die with the the terror is bullshit where you just die immediately. So as long as you have the shield and the firecracker prosthetic tools, you're good. It's not that hard. Yeah, but in the first place, it's definitely, but new game plus is just easier just to skip it. I will still recommend fighting it because the attack power is very important. Like, I can I can imagine, I, like, at the end of the game, right? Well, I beat the game yesterday. If I didn't have the attack power I had, I would struggle way more on the Demon of Hatred fight. You know, for sure. Like, I was doing a lot of damage to him, and I was buffing myself up and all that stuff just to do more damage. So, I would definitely recommend to try and get all of the memories you can so you can do more damage. The next one on the list is the Corrupted Monk, but it's the Illusion version, which you fight in Maple Village. There's actually... And I... Yeah? Yeah, the Illusion version of the fight is absolutely the worst. It's not fun at all. The, on the contrary, I would say the illusion fight is super easy if you know what you're doing. <laughs> like, that fight is a complete joke if you know how to do it. You can even actually get a death blow on it and kill him. Her. Her. I'm gonna call it an it. Anyway. <laughs> you can get a death blow and uh, kill her. Gonna get right? me fucking cancel. What are you saying? You're gonna get me fucking cancel. <laughs> Sucks for you. <laughs> but, not nah, for real though, speaking about that fight, you can, um, all you need is firecrackers, uh, snap seed, and fist, fist full of ash. Well, fuck the item is called. And you can stun lock the, 
the corrupted monk. I don't know if you knew that, but you just you do a firecracker, a few hits, then you do you throw a fist flash, a few hits, firecracker, and you go like that, and then you use the snap seeds, and yeah, it's super a super easy fight because it's just a uh, one stage, and you just spam R1 and your items. That's it. When you play it, when you when, but when you fight it regularly, it just has too much posture, and it's only even though it's only one HP, but it just takes so long. Even though because when you fight the real version, it's so much better. But we get to that later. But like, yeah, it's just it feels like it's just copy and pasted and made it worse. That that fight just just fucking stun look it. <laughs> Don't bother yeah. actually fighting it normally. Ah, that's what I did. First try too. Quick flex. <laughs> Moving okay, forward. the next one on the list, I think you actually did not fight at all, which is Ishinashina. Ishinashina? You're talking about the the one where you get the sure ending? Yeah, that one. Did you even fight that fight? No. How, how am I supposed to fight that fight? If I chose that ending, I would be in New Game Plus. I didn't want to do that. Well, second New Game Plus. Well, I'm gonna do it eventually, you know. But no, I still haven't fought that fight, so... Can't really comment on it. I know how it looks. I think if I the uh, the bitch that gives you the that uh, gives you the gourd from the gourd seeds, you fight her, then you fight uh, Ishin and like his weaker version of the Ishin you fight at the end of the game. So, yeah, I know how to fight it. It's just haven't played it. It's a fun fight, no, that's for sure. And the Emma's fight team pretty fucking good. But the next boss mm. is the original Shinobi I uh, the Owl fight. But yeah, uh, that one fight is actually that one fight is fun. It's, don't get me wrong, but it's not as good as the second hour fight that you can fight, which is optional. Which is just kind of sad. Like how, how can the second one that's optional be better than the first one? You know? <laughs> well, it's a secret boss. True, but eh, it's a good fight. We talked about it before, right? But the main issue yeah. I had with it, he runs away too much. That's my problem. Your problem was the posture bar. Mine is running away. <laughs> And fun fact with his boss theme, it was one of the few tracks composed by the same guy who did most of the Tenchu games. Mm. Which, I, do you even know those games actually, or? No, never heard of them. <laughs> I think I've oh. actually heard of them, but never played them, you know. Yeah, it was composed by Noriyuko Asukara. He was like the guest composer. He did just like a few tracks and it was one of them and it's actually a pretty cool track. Fair enough. He does have good music, you know, for the mm. play. And then the next boss, which I absolutely adore, is the true corrupted monk because it's actually it's a good design boss this time. <clears throat> First try oh, quick flex. My bad. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm pretty sure the audio. <laughs> Swallow. <laughs> I tried talking with water in my mouth. Not very professional of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 11 podcasts in. You think I fucking improved? Fair enough, well played. Anyway, the true corrupted monk compared to the illusion version is. Fucking amazing. It's just good. Much. I love the arena. The music is amazing. Even though you can cheese like most of its phases, it's still a fucking fun fight. I mean, look, the arena it looks way better. The fight is way more entertaining. You can you can <laughs> cheese the fight with the death blows, right? Mm. But it's not it's not it's not as bad as the one where you can just stun lock it. So it's a better fight overall, for sure. But then again, I think, like you said before, the Corrupted Monk Illusion is just kind of there for being there type of thing. You know, just just to fill in the space so that it's not as empty. That's the whole point yeah. why that fight is, is in there. <laughs> it's, it's like Vicar Amelia, but that's another point, to be honest, like from Bloodborne. But like, Vic unlike Vic Vicar Amelia, The difference I is like Vicar Amelia was a good fight. I don't know what you're on about. That fight, bigger movie I felt it was fucking played. You, I you like between. You like that? I mentioned out. this. Yeah, I know because that that's the audio is going crazy. I know that much. That between Rom, 
Oh wait, no, I'm talking about Shadow of Yarnum, actually, wait, it's just- You're talking about the snakes, like a... not Vikram. Anyway, let's not talk that about Bloodborne, true. because that's not gonna end well. <laughs> no, right, not, I not this time, hate Bloodborne. <laughs> yeah, no, you but do. But yeah, Joker of the Mon, good fight overall. Yeah, but it is a good fight. And the fucking next best boss in the game, in my opinion, is the Divine Dragon, and that's just because of the fucking music. It's a good track, people. It's not the best boss fight. Visually pleasing is amazing. Like the visuals are amazing, and but uh, let's be real here. The fight is more just of a, I don't know. It's more of a gimmick. It's more for the visual aspect and just to make, I don't know, just to get you more involved with the lore and the whole, you know, theme of Sekiro. It's not that much of a boss fight. And I do like the way they show, like, oh, it's, like, it's such an original way to draw a dragon. It's like, sure, it draws inspiration, obviously, but, like, if I imagine a Chinese Japanese dragon, that would not be the first thing, but it fits the game so well, so that's what I loved about it. He's also handicapped, so, you know, the main character yeah, can blind, relate. He's blind, he's <laughs> blind in one eye, and then he lost his other eye, and it's cool. And the sword is actually based on one of the seven wonders of Japan, I think, so that's a cool nod. I've I've seen people in videos be like, oh, the Moonlight Greatsword or something. It's not the Moonlight Greatsword, but something similar to it. And I can I can kind of see it. It is similar to a Moonlight Greatsword from the other games. And then okay, the next fight is your favorite, you said, and that's the owl fight, the father one in Hirata yeah, State. Yeah, the the real owl fight. The owl fight with some testicles to it. Not the not the owl fight where he's just being a bitch and runs away all the time. This one actually fights you. <laughs> no, it's weird because I remember when I got to this fight, fight, I was actually really scared because like, oh god, this it's one of the end game bosses. This might actually be a really hard boss. And then I fucking beat him on my third try, and I'm like, okay. I thought fight. the same actually. Like, uh, I was thinking this fight's gonna take me a long ass time to beat. I'm not sure. I, you know, like I want to record it. But then again, I was like, it's too warm. If I want to record, I need to turn off everything in my room. Fans bullshit like that. And I was like, fuck that. Not doing that, right? So I just uh, I started recording without audio. Just to see how it goes. Fought him once. Did all right. Died, you know. Went the second time. Died almost immediately. I was like, okay. I went to take something to eat. Came back. Third try. Beat the motherfucker. <laughs> you know, I was like, the yeah. fuck? I mean, I was happy and I was proud and all that. But I was like, third try, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird taste in the mouth, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's, it's still, in my opinion, the best fight, you know? Mm. The next fight, we already talked about it, but it's Demon of Hatred. We talked about it. You fight him a legit third try, yep. and I choose yep. him because fuck off. We, c we can't. We can't. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I did like the lore mm -hmm. aspect of him being the sculptor, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I like that too. I like that too. And at the end where you kill him, he's like, thank you for killing him. You know, that was cool. And actually, if you drink enough, like, with him... Sake, I know. Like, when, you, when you go into the fight, it's like, he says sculptor. He recognizes who it was. And I thought I was going to get that, but I didn't. I, like, I tried my best to speak with him all the time, as much as I could. And I thought I you, did to the maximum, but no. Apparently you also no. need to actually overhear, like, sneak behind the dilapidated temple just to hear him talk to Emma. Yeah, I did that, I think. I'm pretty sure. No, oh, there's I like a the conversation talking about. Talking about. Oh, yeah, no, it's with Emma where she talks about, oh, what do you use the sword for? And he's like, oh, to slay a demon. I think that's one of the triggers. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't think I... I don't actually think I did that one, maybe. Hmm. Uh, I could be wrong on that one. Also, you need to talk to the old lady in the in the temple after the fight. Like, you know, the old lady that talks about a demon? Yeah. Yeah, I think she mentions it as well in the beginning part of the game. I, I think I talked to her. I think. Mm. Anyway. I, tr so, I tried to talk to her most NPCs. Anyway, yeah. And the last, last fight? fight is in the Sword Saint. It was okay. It was a good fight. What do you mean? It was a good fight. I liked it. It's quite fun. Maybe because Ishin wasn't that interested of a character. It's like, oh, he dies after you beat the Divine Dragon. It's like, okay, good to know. 
I mean, I talked to Ishin, uh, the, you know, to the maximum. I think I could give him sake and everything, you know, all of the drinks. And she did learn some cool stories from him. But, yeah, uh, he, he's not the most interesting character, but it was cool finding him in his prime because you don't fight him as an old man. You, know, you find him in his prime, and it was it was a cool fight. It's like, it's a long fight too, you know, it's three stages, but... I, uh, Technically eh. four when you count yeah, Genichiro Gen in the beginning. Dude, Genichiro is a fucking joke, okay? Like, literally, all the times when I would fight the final boss yesterday, I would go in, I would die to Genichiro, respawn, and then I would fucking murder him. He wouldn't even touch me, and I would kill him. And I would just be like, why do I even die to him, and then I have to resurrect? I don't, I don't know, but I just... Genichiro is a joke at the end of the game. <laughs> Definitely, like, you improve, but I think Yishin also captures the gameplay perfect. Like, the fight, the fight was designed to test you on all your skill. Like, did you know how to deflect? Can you use Mikiti counter all right? Did you he, use lightning deflect? There's like, he does he everything. did all the, that's just an amazing fight. He, yeah, he does, the, he does everything. He has the, the spear, a gun, a sword, lightning, sweep, you know, Magiri, everything. That's that's why I like the fight. It was pretty much everything you've learned so far is being put to use in the end of the day. It's not, you know, with the final boss fight. That's what I liked. And also, it looked amazing. You know, you can't you can't deny that. <laughs> Definitely. But the weirdest thing is, like, it's weird because like the main composer for the game, Yuka Kitamura, she does really good final fucking boss thing. Like for Dark Souls 2, she did all the other thing, which is amazing. Dark Souls 3, she did Slave Night Gale and Soul of Cinders, which was amazing tracks, but I cannot remember Ishin's final boss theme at all. I'm not gonna comment on that because I'm really bad with like video game music, so yeah. Probably not the best idea for me to talk about weird, it. But huh? You can tell when the track uh, can you repeat that? You can tell when a track is good, though. Yeah, I could, but I'm bad at remembering them. <laughs> oh, well, good. But so that, nice. yeah, that's all the bosses, that's for sure. Yep. I mean, Sekiro has solid bosses. That's yeah, weird. but will you prefer it over Bloodborne's bosses? I think so. I would say, yeah, probably. Really? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I really like Orphan of Cause, but everybody likes Orphan of Cause. It's just an epic battle, you know? You just dash in, the parry, start attacking him, he's fucking reckless. What else can you want? But uh, the thing is, I don't want to compare. I don't want to compare Sekiro to Dark Souls and Bloodborne that much because the gameplay is quite different to the point where I don't feel like I'm playing the same game. And I think that's that's what I'm talking about where some people were having issues with, like you said, with Genichiro. Is they were thinking they're still playing a Dark Souls game where you have to dodge. Sekiro doesn't have dodging. It doesn't. The only dodging it has is the jumping when you have the Migiri, the swipes and the grabs. That's the only dodging you can do. And the grabs still, some, still hit you if you're being too greedy. Because the, you don't have that many iframes in Sekiro. So, I wouldn't compare it gameplay. I wouldn't compare the bosses and gameplay wise to other to the Bloodborne games. I'm kind of looking at it as, as its own thing. You know? I can understand. So, what about you? What about you? You didn't mm -hmm. answer that question. You didn't answer that question. Well, do you no, prefer because... Bloodborne bosses or Sekiro? Or do, you, or do you have the same stance with me? They're definitely two completely different games. And my stance with Bloodborne with most of its bosses, like aesthetic wise, I actually do prefer Bloodborne's and soundtrack wise a little bit more. Like, sure, Mikalash and Rom fucking suck gameplay wise, but that mean where their music and atmosphere is just so good. While Sekiro, for me, gameplay wise, it's just more fun, but atmospheric wise, it's just. Not there. I'm sure, that's good. Maybe I just maybe I don't like pre prehistoric Japan, but still. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Sekiro, uh, not Sekiro, sorry, Bloodborne does nail the atmosphere. You go in and you actually feel like you're in that area. So. But I do prefer that's... the game. He had a little bit more colors because, like, I've seen so many different shades of gray. But the whole the whole genre of that game was being dark and gray, like. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, can you expect? Sekiro was also dark and grainy, and it had pretty visuals. Sekiro wasn't dark and gray. Not even close. Sekiro was well, had I'm vibrant about colors. Atmosphere wise, you're like post war, post war in Sekiro, so yeah. You are post war and actually during during a war at the end of the game. Oh, yeah, but the still, invasion of the red threat. That was an amazing part, by the way. Yeah, but still, it's it's not as dark. Sure, some areas are dark, and later on in the game it becomes darker. But Sekiro has lots of more vibrant and colorful a areas in general. Fucking, Which I prefer. you know. But that's just that's not more. That's not that, that that's not that much of a criticism. It's more of an opinion. So there's a bit. It's a bit different. <laughs> fucking fucking Bloodborne stands. I can't stand them. Anyway, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, I like the game, There's but you know, it's not my favorite game. <laughs> Chew. Sorry, I can hear over you having Bloodborne stuck in your fucking throat. Anyway, Sekiro has a lot of mini funny bosses. coming from you. <laughs> yeah, but Sekiro Bloodborne does have lots of mini bosses. And I'm not gonna list them all because most of them plainly put suck. But like, mention the ones you like. <laughs> uh, huh. Nah, nah, I'm joking. Oh, I'm playing. But the ones that I like, huh? Honestly, not that many. I thought that most of the mini bosses were dog shit. I like the the ones that were in armor. Specifically, if you remember, uh, there was a one with a with a spear. You you, you remember that one? It was a mini boss with a spear, like the at one the top you of fight a. fighting the memory. No, no, no. You don't fight him in the memory. You fight him in the main game, and it's where you go in. It's the place where you go in the beginning of the game to meet Kuro and get your weapon. If you go uh, back there, one, yeah, yeah. yeah, you find him. I forgot his name because it's too fucking long. But that guy with the spear, I liked him not because he was a super fun boss or something like that. I liked him because you lear I learned from that mini boss how to actually play Sekiro. I adapted to Sekiro's mm. gameplay style. The whole fast pace. Don't, don't let the guy breathe because that boss fight, even if you Megiri counter him, he pushes you off the blade so you don't you can't hit him and his posture bar starts going down and then he get he, he tries to hit you so you have to parry him. So you really need to be very aggressive, use some of your prosthetic tools actually to make the fight easier, more bearable and just it puts you, it, it makes you actually adapt to Sekiro. So I like that mini boss fight for the learning purposes of it, right? And also the ninjas. I fucking hate the ninja mini boss fights, especially the one in the memory that you have to fight so you can get to the second owl fight, where he, if you let he, if you leave him alone, he summons uh, dogs that shoot lightning. I think even if they don't shoot lightning, he summons dogs. That that fucking ninja is really annoying. <laughs> but the you do learn how to magiri counter from them. You do learn how to parry. And you do learn how to dodge like the big heavy attacks, some of them, where you have to sidestep. He also has a swipe attack. It's just a very good enemy to actually learn the game from. But it's not that fun of an enemy, if that makes sense. No, I can understand, but like, out of all the mini bosses, I actually do not like none of them. I just feel like most of them were gimmicky, or just did not fit Sekiro's playstyle. I can understand that. In the end of the day, I'm a professional. No, you're not. <laughs> I don't need to know. You know, so have you ever considered muting your phone while recording? <laughs> like real talk. Shut it, you. I'm just saying. Anyway, but back to the point. I do where you get you're coming from. And not like any of the mini boss. Sorry. Not like any of the mini bosses. I do get that. But uh, I enjoyed some of them, honestly. I enjoyed fighting. I, I, if I didn't enjoy fighting them, I wouldn't. F I wouldn't fight all of them, right? I guess. Hmm. I do hate them. I do hate them. Don't get me wrong. I despise them, especially headless. I fucking hate headless. Like but later on, when I, when I learned how to fight headless, and I had more divine confetti, and I had the fucking uh, the shield that uh, uh, you know blocks the fucking the terror attacks. It wasn't that bad, but I fucking hate. Hey, headless in the beginning of the game was horrible. Mm. Also, it doesn't help that, that some of them are kind of hidden. You know, like I was about to end, end the game and I, I missed one headless 
and uh, then I was like, oh, there's actually five headless. It doesn't help when I went to Google to search how many headless there are. It says four. And I was like, I had all four tokens. And I was like, okay, so I beat all of the headless. No, there's actually five. So Google, fuck you <laughs> for giving me the wrong answer. I think there are one for each of the weird tablets you can have. Like one of yeah. them is for better posture, some of them, yeah, that stuff. Yep. Which they are helpful, I'm not gonna lie, but most of them don't. Really? Uh, actually, the only times I used those sugars for in boss fights was for the the monkey boss fight where you have to chase them around. The one, uh, you know, that one where it's like four monkeys, the see no, see no evil shit like that. Monkey. Yep, that boss fight. And the only other time I used the... Um, the sugars was in the Demon of Hatred boss fight, so I can get more attack damage. And the same thing goes for the last boss fight. So, not that many boss fights. But uh, the sugar I use the most, and by far, in my opinion, is the most useful one, is the the sugar that makes you invincible. Like, the yeah. where the enemies can see you. I use that invisible. one the most, and it's by... F yeah, sorry, invisible. And it's by far the best sugar, you know? Bar none. It has the most the most utility too. Definitely. But yeah. So okay, next up is definitely the locations of the game, but there's so many to list. So like do you remember any of your favorite areas of the game or? Oh the um, the Divine Rome or whatever the fuck it was called. That looked, the that looked amazing. Head palace. Yeah. That, that, that looked really good, you know? It is. It's my favorite area as well. Everybody's favorite area. I mean, <laughs> it looks fantastic. But I think that's the that's the main one. There's, Sekiro looks amazing in all of the areas, honestly. But that's the area that, that's my favorite and sticks out to the most. And, and probably is the majority of players' favorite area. Well, I for me, imagine. there's also another area. Actually, to like... The boss arena for the headless ape, like the sunken valley passage, it calls. It's like it's cool seeing those giant Buddha statues all around. Mm. Fair enough. And another one is definitely Mibu Village. The mon the monk, uh, the monk area. That was also really cool. Oh, Zembu Temple. Yeah, that was a good one. Mount Kogan. Yep. And also, if you jump in that uh, in the world in one area, you can go down and you find like a Buddha statue under under the war. And you also get cool prayer beat. Uh, that one's also really cool. Sekiro has good areas. Yeah, but fun fact with the Mabel Village is yep. actually a homage to another HP Lovecraft. And it, isn't it, yeah. isn't yeah, it and the same thing that was based on the DLC from Bloodborne? The whole yeah, the fishing uh, hat fisher? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, I learned that too. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the, 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 the original book, which I completely forgot the name of the shadow over something. It's actually a really cool book, which I recommend reading. Mm. I was thinking about reading the one, the fishing, how much the fuck it was called, right? Just because of Bloodborne and now Sekiro too. It was like two areas where the whole idea is that the local people be, get transformed into these fish, you know, monster things. Like the village gets infected or something. Like that. that sounds cool. I was thinking about doing it that, but never go around yeah. to it. Something to consider reading, sure. And another aspect of Sekiro is the NPCs, but there's so fucking many of them, and most of them are available. What do you like? Can you repeat that? The NPCs. Yeah. Like any memorable one? There is a lot of them, but only quite few of them are quite interesting. There's lots of them, yeah, but most of them not that interesting, or their quest lines end quickly. Akura is the one that disappointed me the most. I think my favorite quest line is the is the guy you meet in the memory, Hirade State, where uh, he was uh, being a burglar and was, you know, just searching to sh to steal shit, and then you meet him, you know, in the main game, you know, in the memory, and then he's becoming a shop owner or something. Like that. I forgot his name. Right, right, and basically, if you he asks you to lend him money, and you lend him some money, and then he you know, stocks up with items. Then he asks you to find somebody who's big and strong so he can he can uh, get help so he can loot the corpses. Shit like that. And he asks for a few favors during the game and if you do all of them, he gets a bigger inventory and bigger inventory. 
at the end and where he dies. yeah at the end where you, they they get invaded you find him you find him and if you uh did uh, yeah if you did Kotaro. Kotaro, if you told the big motherfucker to go meet him you're gonna find him dead he's gonna be like oh he dropped them away but he's sleeping now and Sekiro's just like yeah sleeping oh, <laughs> god to me i love that part it made me sad because then he dies so like oh yeah and then he was like i go uh, you know they took everything but i go one last item for you it's one coin are you interested and then you get it and it's like a discount for every merchant that continues in your game plus for 10 percent. and i was just like you know, that's cool he's a, he's a cool dude in the end of the day he wasn't just trying to use you so to become rich i mean he did he did earn a lot of money, obviously, and all that. Uh, but he did, in the end of the day, he didn't, he wasn't just, he helped you out, you know? So, I like that. No, and I like how he genuinely grew an attachment, like their friendship with Kotaro. Like, in the beginning, like, I'm just using him, but then later on, they actually grow close together, which is cute, and then they died. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Any I... other characters you remember, or no? I mean, that's by far, in my opinion, the best NPC, bar none, right? That quest line is just by far the best. Um, the, the, the fucking the maiden, you know, she's also cool. You learn about the whole, the whole other, the other children in the monk area that died because of the, because they were trying to get the divine heritage, you know. You find her, yeah, and, and, the, you, and then if you if you go back, you see her actually in the folding screen monkeys area, where she was like talking to the other dead ones. And you can actually send Kotaro there, and you also see him talking to them. Yeah, that's that's cool. Uh, no, also the oh, you just reminded me of another another fucking quest that I actually really liked. It was the, I think his name was Black Cat something. I forgot it exactly. It was. It was the guy who's a midget, and you meet him, and he sells you the um, the prosthetic tool with the umbrella. He sells you that, a really useful prosthetic tool, actually. And if you do his quest, he's like, after you purchase it from him, he says he's going to the the fucking manga temple, right? And then when you go there, he's like, oh, you need to navigate that kite, but uh, you know, you can bargain with the with the rat that's over there to actually do it for you so what you do is you go there you kill the the rat and then you use my the mind control ninjutsu and then he controls the kite so you allow yourself and him to use the kite to jump and go to the other the other end of the mountain or whatever. then you meet him and he's like and then you you meet him again and you talk to him and uh he tells you that he came here to uh visit the graves of the grave of his son or something like that he really? I did not do his guest quest line at all. I didn't know that actually. Yeah, you meet him there and he's like uh he was talking about his dead son and stuff like that. And Aww. uh you the after the next time you meet him is back in the in the old grave area, after you beat the divine dragon, you find him under a tree dying. And it was like uh I think he said something along the lines. But he basically saw the you know the red soldiers going for trying to kill a kill or something like that and then i think he was reminded of his son and basically he went in to kill to protect him right i think he did but in the end of the day he got fucked up and he died and then he gives you one last item and that's it that's the end of his quest never, that's also a really good question i never knew that yeah that's not actually fucking good i never knew that yep but you know it, it's it's low key a hard quest. It's not a hard quest line to do, but it's not the easiest one. You know, you need to you need to know that uh, you need to go to the old grave. You need to go there, buy something from him. You know, the, the prosthetic tool with umbrella. You know, obviously very useful. You get that, then you need to go to a monk temple. Monk temple. You need to use the ninjutsu to uh, ninjutsu ability, which I didn't even knew that. Then you meet him again. Okay. You're gonna the next time you meet him in uh, for his son's grave, it's gonna be next to a Buddha statue, so you can't really miss that one. Um, and the last time where you can meet him where he dies, you know, again, you can't really miss that one. But it just it's a tricky quest line to start, I guess. Definitely. 
But that's that's low key the problem with those games. You can for, you can miss some good ass quest lines if you don't know mm. what exactly you're doing. So there's that. But yeah, if you do it, you know you get something good. But yeah, other other than that, honestly, I did other quest lines like the the one samurai. Like the the only black samurai you meet in that game. I he was talking it like that. No, I mean it's the he's the only one. No joke. What do you mean? It's not even being racist or something. I'm not even saying you were. Anyway, I, continue. Anyway, you meet him next to the ninja, whatever fuck. I for next to one of the ninja mini boss, and he's talking about something about a melody. You talk to him yeah. and you can actually send him to the dungeon, which I didn't I didn't send anybody to the dungeon because I thought that was a really shit quest line. I didn't knew exactly what was the quest line, but I didn't think it was gonna end well. And after I saw on YouTube how the quest line ends, I was like uh, I'm happy I didn't send anybody there because that quest it's just a horrible quest line, in my opinion. Mm. But uh, hey, he was yeah, talking about he was talking about a melody. And then um, if you continue to the Mibu village you see him one more time before you get to the Mibu village. And he was again talking of something about, a, you know, a melody. And after you beat the all ring of the war, he's like, oh, I finally found the melody. She was something to him. And now it's gone. And he thanks you. And then he just dies and gives you a Buddha statue. It's it's not it's not a bad quest line, but it's not as good as the other two quest lines for sure. But you it's know, an alright quest line. Felt- I give you that much. For me, it felt like the most weirdest one because, like, oh, it's here. Oh, now he's dead. That was something. It, 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 it feels a little bit rushed. It's like, why did he die? Why did he? Re- I get, I get the whole. Oh, they were enti- The melody was enticing or something like that. But like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a mediocre quest line. That's about it. Mm-hmm. There's not much more to say about it. The other quest lines anyway. aren't special either. Like the whole, the two. The last one I'm gonna talk about is the two fucking the two carps, the two people who want to become carps. Do you remember yeah, that? that was yeah. yeah, it's it's all right, you know, it's cool and all. It has a cool story and the fact that you can choose to kill one and let the other one survive and all that. But yeah, not not too it's special. Probably some Japanese mythology that we just not get because we're not simply cultured enough. Well, what can you do? <laughs> Anyway, since it's going almost an hour long, let's talk about the final subject, and that's the endings. Out of the four endings, I think there is. There is four endings. Yeah, one, two, three. Don't count. Don't count. Yeah, there four. is four. Yeah. Yeah. Well, out of all four of them, which one was your head cannon? Which one's your favorite? Uh, the one where. They go to the west. And that's one I that's the one I got. Where they go to the west and uh, to return the dragon's heritage Which to is the most complicated place. one to get. Yes it is. <laughs> uh, but I think that's that's the ending I got from my ending, from my final end. And I think that's the best one, honestly. Uh, second I think second followed by Sekiro dying. That's also a good ending. Uh, and it makes sense, you know, Sekiro, obviously, if he went to all the other lengths, he would kill himself, so Kuro would survive. Granted, they didn't really care about Kuro, so it was kind of like, eh, don't care about him, but it makes, it makes sense. My, the worst ending by far is the one where Kuro dies, and then Sekiro just becomes the next sculptor. I despise that ending to no end because if you look the if you look in the cutscene after the ending, where you see Sekiro actually being the sculptor, he just looks fucking depressed as shit and really sad. And that's that's by far the shittiest ending in my opinion. The, the one where you... it implies that yeah that like oh it's gonna happen again. What happened to the original sculptor? Sekiro ends up becoming a demon. Yeah, like because if, repeating you, cycle. if you talk to the old lady, she also says the be, just because you kill the demon of hatred doesn't mean the hatred is gone. So somebody can still become the demon yeah. of hatred. So yeah, just basically a cycle. So I hate that ending. Uh, the the ending where you become Shura and you just kill everybody and you become 
you know, just a killing machine. That was a cool ending, but uh, I think that's more of a like an auto alternate universe type of ending rather than the main ending, you know. Definitely a cool thing that they added. If you're like, oh, look at Tekila, he's evil. Yeah, Loki reminds me of a DC movie about Batman and that universe where it came out recently, where everything just went to shit, right? Like half of the cast was killed, the other half of the cast was like dismembered, you know, just fucking handicapped or being mind controlled to uh, be evil and be also being handicapped, you know, just just all around the worst possible outcome, right? So. It's cool to look at it, but if that was really the main ending of the story, I wouldn't enjoy that, you know? Mm. So that's my view on it. What about you? Well, yeah, the one going to the West is a pretty cool ending. It is a, like, I like the child of the rejuvenating water. I have, we don't know what the fuck her name is. Like, I like her as a character. Mm. The purification ending where Sekiro sacrifices himself. That was also a cool one because I like how it implies that could have opened up his coffee shop and I was like, oh, good for him. I mean, his tea shop. Mm. Yeah. And the other two endings I don't really care about. I was like, there is no canon ending so far. If there's a Sekiro 2 and they talk about it, maybe. But if there is a canon ending, I'm pretty sure it's the one that's going to the west because that just opens up a door for another sequel. Uh, I was about to say if if there is a if there is gonna be a canon ending, it's definitely gonna be the one going to the west. It's either that one or where he becomes the sculptor. The other two endings, I don't just yeah. There's no story to be continued there, you know. Hmm. No, because there is free updates, but I doubt there's going to be any DLC for the game. But only time will tell. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um, I hope they make a Sekiro 2. I don't ho- I don't. I don't care about an update. I just want to, I just want them to make a second game, you know? I think it's going to be better than making a it DLC. Did. If they do get a DLC, you know, I'm probably going to play it. No doubt, but yeah. It's like it did got game of the year, which I think it did rise totally deserve because okay, it not does, weird. I like Sekiro, but like, uh. what games came out in when the Sekiro come out in twenty nineteen? Yeah, what what other games came out in twenty nineteen? Do you remember? Yeah, Kingdom Hearts three. I fucking love Kingdom Hearts three. I think Sekiro honestly deserves game of the year, bar none. Definitely. I just what other games came out that year? There are other Death good... Stranding was a game. Death Stranding? What was that? The one with Hideo Kojima. The... Wait, I'm searching it up right now. Oh, that game! That game! <laughs> I remember nothing about it, honestly. I don't, yeah, I don't like I didn't, I've never played it. I didn't even watch gameplay. The only thing I, I know about the, I've heard about this game is where my friend told me that it was just basically an Amazon delivery simulator. And I'm not sure how much that uh, that comment is how valid that comment is, but you know, it is what it is. It looks it looks nice, visually uh, visually appealing, I guess. I give it that much, but Story wise and gameplay wise, I have I don't know I don't know anything about it. And even if I did know the gameplay, I would still believe that Sekiro still deserves Game of the Year. You know. Well, I, there's not much I can say about that Stranding because I never played the game. The only thing I can say right now, it's the closing statement because we're already going one hour long and like, <laughs> I have a lot of songs, but like for an hour long for an, an hour long podcast, it's gonna take a while. Probably. <laughs> well, but you know what? That's not my problem. <laughs> I'm just here oh, to thanks. talk. Anyway, That's any it. any last statement about Sekiro in general? Uh, if you haven't played Sekiro, play Sekiro. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's a good, it's a good game, and honestly, it's probably one. Of, I'm not sure if it's one of the best. Ga- you know what? It's probably the best Dark Souls type of game you can get into because if you get into a Dark Souls game and you go to Sekiro, you're gonna be thinking about Dark Souls while playing Sekiro and you're gonna try to. You, then you're gonna have to adapt to Sekiro. If you start with Sekiro, you know, when you go to the other games, 
you're gonna st you're gonna be used to pairing, so you're gonna learn pairing, and you're also gonna start dodging. You know, so yeah. If you haven't played them, if you haven't played the Dark Souls games and you're curious about them, start with Sekiro. Mm. That's the only thing I have to say about Sekiro. <laughs> And I agree for the most part, but like, ugh, I don't know. I liked it. I think I liked it. I 100% it, but honestly, my feeling for Sekiro is quite mixed. But it's a good game. Will I recommend it, though? That's a hard biscuit to say. Fair enough. To each their own, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, that's one way to end a podcast like that. Anyway, this will definitely not be the last time I will feature PD Brazy because I literally know no one else to fucking get, to have here. That is true. But hopefully can, next time... I can confirm that. Fuck you. Hopefully fuck you I too. can fix the audio because I like, get made to make it better because like, I can tell there's a point where the audio just does not pick up anything at all. Well, maybe next time we're gonna figure out something better than recording from Skype and having lag. Because sometimes your audio would just lag. I'm, I'm not sure if my did the same thing. Oh, you're definitely fucking lagged. Well, that's just because we're, for some re reason, using the Skype recording system, so... Which we didn't yeah. even know had until this moment. Yep. Next time, something a bit more professional. <laughs> No, nah, no, that's not my fucking model. Anyway, thank you for Fair listening, enough. and I hope you enjoy this podcast. Don't fucking interrupt me.